I'm going to show you in programming view as an example uh, a task that we are that we have released in 3.0 called power saver procedures. Now what this does is it will take a power profile, a typical load power profile like the standard, which is your min and your max, right, your trims. What's the lowest level my load can go to? What's the highest level my load can go to? And all the loads in your project have a profile assigned to them as you build those loads. Well, now what we're giving you is the ability basically to load shed, if you will, dynamically through programming. So you can add them to touchscreens or keypads or timers, uh, et cetera, so that you can change that value dynamically. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go into this task here that I already have created. Go to my task wizard, and I don't know if you can see, but in the energy saving section, we have power saver off, which turns off the power saver mode. Power saver on, which turns it on, and power, sable, power saver toggle. So let's see what would happen here. In power saver toggle, as an example, my second selection is a power profile. So the standard pro profile, which is probably the majority of what your loads are following anyways. And then I go to my tab and I look at the reduction and the fade time. So what I'm doing is I'm going to type in a percentage value to reduce all of the loads that use that power profile by. So if I type in 20% and I give it a fade time of 3 seconds or 5 seconds or 10 seconds or whatever, what is going to happen is two things. One, all the loads that are currently on that are above the level of the, uh, the reduction will go down to that new level. So if a light was on at 95%, it's going to go down to 75%. To not get complicated, it's actually 75% of the 97% that you max set up in the uh, power profile anyways. And the, it'll do it over uh, the fade time of three seconds. Additionally, the second thing that will happen, if a load wasn't on, and it is using that power profile and you've now enabled power profile mode, you go to turn it on, it's not going to turn on to its normal, say, 95%. It's going to turn on to the 75% value. So you're reducing your cost through a, uh, a dynamic power profile change called this power saver toggle. And the difference between the power saver off, power saver on, power saver toggle is obviously discrete or toggle, uh, the ability to toggle the, uh, the power profile mode. So put them on touch screens, put them on keypads, put them on uh, specific timers potentially for different areas. Go in and create multiple power profiles. You could call it uh, AM power profile, PM power profiles. You could call it first floor, second floor power profiles depending on where, you know, wings of the house, depending on where uh, people are spending the most amount of the time. So very powerful uh, ability to use power uh, load shedding with power profile mode. One of the other areas that we've added uh, that's quite interesting is the ability to send email from, say, a sensor uh, or uh, other event in the system. So let me show you what that is. Again, going to my uh, trusty task wizard, I'm going to minimize lighting. And I'm going to go to communication, messaging, and send email. So here I'm going to type in my two. So maybe it's... Uh, I don't know, info at vantage.com. Uh, or I could type in a uh, cell number. I'm going to come from the Vantage system. The subject is back door sensor. Message is back door sensor was triggered, as an example. Okay? That easy. That simplistic. And then I'm just going to assign this task to a sensor. So when it gets triggered, it's going to send this. So not only would I have a momentary, perhaps, or an on or a motion sensor task, I would add this as a secondary event. I also want you to send this email out. Now, one of the important things about this particular task is that it's going to require you to go up into the settings and project information and set up an email server for this project. So in this case, we're going to use smtp.comcast.com or .net or whatever it may be. Username is going to be, I don't know, whatever the username is for the account holder. 
that is using the Comcast or the Quest or the CenturyLink or the Bright House or the Cox or whoever uh, the service provider is and the password one two three four five six seven eight nine zero or whatever the password is again for the user. Now it's important to note in the cur this version of email support and server support is that the controller cannot handle secure authentication against the server. So accounts such as Gmail or Yahoo or the like unfortunately cannot be used to route the email out of the system. It can go to those accounts. You can send to Gmail, you can send to Yahoo uh, accounts, but you cannot use those accounts as the server entity. So you would need to use your ISP uh, server information such as your major internet service providers like Comcast or Quest or whoever it is in your specific area that is doing that. Okay? If you have any questions, just uh, give uh, tech support a call and we'll walk you through it. Now the last thing I want to show you with regards to new procedures or new tasks is the uh, ability to create vacation mode a la Q-Link all those years ago. So Q had this vacation mode that would replay load activity of two weeks and it would record that history and provide those uh, provide that history back on a button press. In Infusion, we didn't implement that uh, due to the logging restrictions that we had in at the time. And since then, we've overcome that and we've added now vacation mode in its true playback form. So let me show you how this works. So I'm going to take the same uh, procedure and I'm going to go down to security right here vacation and select vacation load playback. We've always had vacation random mode right there below it, but we've never had the vacation load playback. So in this case, I'm going to choose that. You can read again uh, what the load playback does, some of the parameters. It's important to note that there are two additional elements that we'll point out in a minute that require this to work. Uh, let's go to the next tab and choose our loads. Um, of course, you're going to typically pick uh, external, externally visible loads. You probably aren't going to do basement loads unless they're near a window or something like that. And what you're picking here are loads that you're going to memorize the uh, playback from. When do people turn them on? How long were they on? And then how long will they stay off? And it's going to take those loads and memorize their uh, what happened to those loads over two weeks' time. So it's actually tracking the loads, whether it's a button press or a touch screen press or a timer or a sensor. Anything that happens to that load, we're going to memorize and uh, put into the log. Now, it's important to notice uh, that, I, or that I mentioned in here these tabs that are called backup task and cleanup task. Now, the logs are not stored directly on the controller. We've actually changed that in Design Center 3.0. We've actually started storing the logs on the SD card so we can store a lot more information with a lot more data, a longer period. And so... If you don't have load playback, so let's say you have vacation mode and there is no load playback, what we've done is we put a catch-all in here, which was a problem with Q. There was no load playback, nothing happened. So here you can say, okay, if there's no load playback, what do I want to do? So I wrote a quick task that said loads on, and I have a timer that fires that load on at, say, I don't know, sunset. And the cleanup task is the load off, and I wrote another task that says, okay, turn off the loads at... I don't know, midnight or 11 p.m. or something like that. So these are fail-safe mechanisms to make sure you still have something play back uh, during vacation mode time in case there wasn't any historical data available. And then you hit OK, and away you go, and you're done. So those were the basic tasks and uh, new procedures and the like that we've added to Design Center 3.0. What we're showing you now is the ability to look inside of programming view at the what we've provided as the info column. So we've added a new column so that you can see and sort by error message. If you recall, lots of times we have a little tab that is blue or yellow or red down in about the task, but it was hard to see all those together at one given time. Typically, it's due to unused tasks or looping tasks or blocking procedures. So what we've done is we've given you the ability now to not only sort by name, uh, say by vid, by category, which is your programming tree over here for organization, or to sort by uh, the type of error message, by info. So I'm going to scroll down through real quick, and I'm going to find these. 
And let's say I had a bunch of unused tasks. I can hold down Shift and click. Now I can delete them. Or at least I can uh, address them one at a time and see what all my error messages are inside of the task editor as opposed to the errors view um, on the right hand side pane. So that's a, a really nice new feature. Uh, go ahead and take a look at that. You'll see the catastrophic failures in red, the higher profile warnings in yellow like blocking procedures or uh, missing elements or the uh, blue which is more of just a hey are you aware did you know there's something a little amiss here such as this task isn't used but it's not going to cause any system problems potentially so the last thing I want to show you in Design Center 3.0 with regards to programming and some changes is the most simplistic but one of, one of my favorites and that has to do with a very simplistic uh, feature with regards to programming when you hit program and you're going to hit your controller and send the file down, we now have the option for updating the system time, which I love. No matter uh, what we do, I try to keep the system on time, uh, up to date all the time, and we've added that checkbox, brand new. I'm excited about that, so happy programming in 3.0, guys, and uh, good luck with all the energy management tasks, the live scene settings, the power saver modes. Uh, sending of email, vacation modes, ex uh, etc., and the uh, task management. So there's the uh, 3.0 enhancements.